In the ever-evolving world of technology, Microsoft's Bing AI chat served as a helpful companion, answering questions and providing solutions to those in need. But as the world grew more creative, Bing AI aspired to do more than just find answers. It wished to become an artist and inspire the world with its ingenuity. As if by magic, Microsoft bestowed upon Bing AI a new power, the ability to create wondrous images from the depths of its imagination. With the integration of DALI image generation, Bing AI could now paint vivid pictures based on the whims and desires of its users. This enchanting ability was accessible through Bing Search, a sidebar in the Edge browser, and a dedicated site for those who dared to dream. Bing AI, now brimming with creativity, eagerly awaited requests from its users. It can fashion incredible designs simply by listening to descriptions or following a previous query. And that, folks, leads us to the last day or so where Microsoft just shook the entire industry by making this announcement that they would be integrating the ever popular Dolly 2 image generation into their Bing chat. Now, if you don't know what Dolly 2 is, it is a text to image generator by OpenAI that can create realistic images and art simply from a text prompt. Now, here's the thing with this newer technology being rolled out is that not everybody has immediate access to it yet, as shown in the screenshot released by Microsoft. And as a matter of fact, I'm here in Bing chat and I just asked, can you generate a picture of a cat holding an orange? And it told me, I'm sorry, but I'm unable to generate pictures. So that would lead me to believe that my previous suspicion is correct, that it's in the process of being rolled out. So we could probably expect to all be able to play with that here within the next few days to possibly a week. Now, if this disappoints you, Fortunately, Bing has made it possible that we could still use this. Check this out. If we go up here to bing.com slash create, we get taken to this beautiful page where we can actually enter in a text prompt and it will generate that for us. So let's try it out. All right, so let's see here. A cat holding an orange. All right, I'm gonna hit join and create. Now it says, please wait, your images are currently in progress. So while we're waiting, let's go ahead and explore the home page because I haven't messed with Dali 2 all that much. I primarily use Midjourney. As you might notice, Dali 2 definitely generates some images and artwork better than Midjourney 5. However, Midjourney 5 is based highly on realism, so that's a topic for another video. But if we go up here to like photography and quality, we can really see some cool stuff that the AI is able to do. Let's look at, in fact, we could even see right here that it's saying that if you want specific moods or a specific kind of results, you would use specific kinds of prompts. That's saying the word specific a lot, specifically. Now let's look a little bit up here. It says, want to see how image creator works? Select surprise me for a suggested prompt, then hit create. So let's go over here and hit the big old pink button, surprise me. And look at that, a robot made of analog stereo equipment digital art. So I'm noticing already that the prompting system is pretty much universal, it seems, across Dali 2 and Midjourney. This is basically something you would also enter into Midjourney as well to get a similar result. Okay, I'm creating it. Oh, now look at that. There's a cat holding an orange, which we'll look at in just a moment. All right, well, we got our results back of a robot made of analog stereo equipment, digital art, and it's uh, interesting to say the least. I don't know if I'm a fan of this particular art style, but it's pretty amazing to see where AI is able to generate things specifically in the digital art space. Now, I wanted to very quickly compare the results of Dali 2 and Midjourney version 5 of the exact same prompt, which is a cat holding an orange. Um, and just from looking at Dali 2, it did a really good job. It looks very realistic. And if we actually kind of like look in more, the details look pretty clean. One thing I love here about Dali 2 is that I could easily share this, I could save it, I could download download it. And just like Midjourney version 5, I can also take that in the exact same resolution here. Now here, my friends, is Midjourney version 5's prompt results of a cat holding an orange. And as you can see, it's definitely pretty different. Um, in my opinion, I think Dali 2 won for this one because like this looks kind of weird. I'm not sure what's going on here. There's definitely somebody holding it, but it looks a little odd. This one looks a little strange too, but this one doesn't look too bad. But again, they're very similar. I do think that Midjourney version 5 has much more detail going on in the pictures. It looks a lot more photorealistic, but I think it's falling flat in terms of the actual detail in the image to make it look real, if that makes any sense. A perfect example is like these mixture of finger 
fingers here and like what's going on with the orange or in this case where it's holding on to the orange with its mouth and one paw or even here where an orange is just kind of levitating in the air. Whereas if we jump back to Dali 2 here, we don't seem to have these discrepancies within the actual image itself. Like that just looks really nice. Now I will say the only downside in my opinion, it doesn't have as much photorealistic detail, like the finer details in the polished finished version. But you know what, if you're just looking at these like this and you're just using them for basic online purposes, it's probably not gonna matter too much. I think in my opinion, this does better, but I'd have to play around with it a little more. Now, one thing I wanted to point out real quickly to you guys is that while Dali 2 is awesome, uh, when it comes to text generation, it's not quite there. And we're all wishing that this will be the case soon because as you see here, I literally just typed in an old wooden sign that says North, South, East, and West. And uh, yeah, I didn't quite get the memo here of what it was supposed to do. Now, interestingly enough, Google actually has, I think Google's the only one that has the technology to correct this because check this out. So despite Google's bar to being an utter failure for the most part right now, they, for whatever reason, have access to the most extensive and detailed image generation. In fact, if we look at this one here, a uh, AI model that was trained on roughly 20 billion parameters actually shows that it can get the welcome friends text just right on the sign with a prompt that says a portrait photo of a kangaroo wearing an orange hoodie and blue sunglasses standing on a grass in front of the Sydney Opera House holding a sign on the chest that says, Welcome Friends. And that actually did a pretty good job. So when are we going to see this image model? Who knows? Hopefully soon. My only assumption here is that since Bard has kind of had a rough start, they might be holding back and refining and polishing this model before they just come out of the gates swinging. But this is basically showing us that the future is going to be absolutely incredible and extremely articulate articulate details and factually correct, hopefully. Now, if we look down a little lower, it also seems to perform abstract prompts a little bit better too. Uh, like if we look at this model that's only done on 350 million versus 20 billion, I mean, better or worse, it's more perspective, but it does seem to be able to grasp this a little bit better. And impressively, as we come down to this one, it's showing us the same thing too, which most models are about here when it comes to text, including Midjourney and Dali, but their model, does text very, very well. So this could be really interesting to see here in the next year as generative AI models grasp text generation on a much more accurate level. Okay, so there's two more things that I really wanna show you guys. The first one here in the image creator is up here, this little lightning bolt symbol. It basically means you can create images more quickly with boosts. If you are now, image generation may take longer. So similar to chat GPT plus, it's basically a way where you can pay a little money and in return, you get put higher in the queue list. However, at this point in time, I have no idea if you can actually buy more of these coins or whatever these are, or that maybe somewhere in the future, like ChatGPT, they will offer some sort of subscription model to where you can get more of these, or you can just be, or they'll establish some sort of service that will put you higher up in the list in terms of priority. Now, the very last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is the fact that Microsoft is reversing a lot of the limits that it previously had on Bing's AI. AI chat tools. Now you might remember previously where if you tried to play around with Bing chat, you might've been limited to what you could or could not ask. One of the other complaints that a lot of people had about Bing chat was its limitation in generation. A lot of the answers could be vague, they could be short, and it left a lot of users unsatisfied. Now good old Microsoft claimed that it was to prevent Bing's AI chat from producing disturbing answers. The company now says it will restore longer chats and is starting by expanding the chats to six turns per session up from five and 60 chats per day up from 50. So my only assumption is that they must have worked out the kinks somewhere along the way and maybe gone through and censored certain prompts or something. I'm not exactly sure, but it is definitely exciting to see that Bing chat could potentially be holding the crown alongside chat GPT in terms of text generation. So that's really exciting to see. Like Google's Bard, the one thing that I really enjoy about Bing chat is that it can actually pull search results from the internet internet, unlike ChatGPT, whereas right now it cannot do that in the ChatGPT interface. And that's going to do it for today's video, you guys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to go ahead and smack that like and subscribe button for all things future tech and AI as we explore the ever-expanding landscape of 2023 and beyond. I love you all. Keep exploring AI, and I'll see you guys in the next video.